What should I eat? That's one of the most common questions that I get. What's amazing is if you ask 10 different knowledgeable people, you might well get 10 different answers. Hi, I'm Dr. Bob Rakowski. This is this week's MoveNet health and lifestyle tip. Remember in our first blog, we talked about malnutrition as the leading cause of death on the planet. Now, we said that malnutrition was not reserved to third world countries alone. The United States has malnutrition and lack of exercise as the number two cause of death. Here we have what's known as overconsumption, undernutrition. I think some of the best nutrition advice was written in the book In Defense of Food by Michael Pollan. He said, eat food, not too much, mostly plants. What I wish he would have said would have had more clarity. Eat real, organic, non-GMO food, not too much, mostly plants. Again, according to the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, 93% of people in the United States do not receive the estimated requirement of nutrients to establish a level of health. When we look at what's been done to our food, we know that the food is chemically altered. New Scientist magazine had a cover story on this. It was entitled, All American High. And it asked the question below it, can fast food alter your brain in the same way as tobacco and heroin? And the answer is yes. Our food is literally modified to become addictive through incredibly intense flavors and the addition of processed sugars. We know that more than half of the standard American diet is processed. And we know when people eat these processed foods, they tend to feed bad bugs in their gut and create toxins that create systemic inflammatory process. And that is related with chronic disease. We also know that the genetic modification of plants has changed the proteins, made them more allergenic, and in some cases dangerous for human consumption. We know that the risk of food allergy has gone up very substantially, and even sadly today kids may even die from peanut ingestion, from peanut allergies. Archives of Childhood Disease had an interesting publication October 2011 and they found that physical inactivity in many cases is the result of fatness rather than the cause. So poor diet may precede physical inactivity. Canadian Journal of Cardiologists found that when people ate one bad meal, their arteries would dilate 24% less, delivering less oxygen to the tissue, which would decrease ex exercise tolerance. We also know that the appetite center of the brain, the hypothalamus, can change with one day of bad eating. That again was published Journal of Clinical Investigation uh, 2012. So what should we eat? We want to eat every color every day. We know that there's strength in diversity. The more variety of plant nutrients that you ingest, the more phytochemicals you get. It was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association in 1995 that at every step along the road to malignancy, the cancer process, plant nutrients tend to reduce the likelihood of transmission to the next phase. The more plants, the more variety of plant nutrients, the more cancer prevention that we have. We want to eat lean, clean proteins enough to maintain our lean mass. I like a test called bioimpedance analysis where we can track the individual's lean mass. We want to maintain lean mass throughout our lifetime. For most people in this population, we should minimize starches. Some people will say, don't eat any starches until you've achieved a body fat of less than 10% for a male or 16% for a female. Uh, that's a little bit of an extreme stance, but minimizing starches for most people is going to be a healthy way to go. Now, let's talk about drinking. We should drink water. At least half of our body weight in ounces. So a 200 pound man would need 100 ounces of water baseline and another 5 ounces for every 15 minutes of exercise. And we want everybody to have at least 30 minutes of exercise a day. Another important factor is to chew your food. We know that chewing the food creates more satiety and therefore will reduce the total amount of food that you eat. 
American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, 2011, published that when obese subjects were asked to chew their food 40 times per mouthful, they ingested 11.9% less calories. The standard American gets 21% of their calories from liquids. These calories are very unsatisfying and often void of nutrients. We certainly want to avoid soft drinks. We know that whether you drink sugar-sweetened soft drinks or artificially sweetened soft drinks, people are more prone to gaining weight and more prone to developing metabolic syndrome. Total liquid advice is this, drink clean waters, clean tea, clean coffee, minimize alcohol, avoid soft drinks, and minimize liquid calories. Remember, nutrition is not alternative medicine. Nutrition is the foundation of life. I'm Dr. Bob Rakowski, wishing you health, happiness, and success, always.